A while ago, I made a video about DroidCam, which is an application that allows you to turn your Android phone into a webcam that you can use on Linux, uh, as well as Windows. And I showed you how to set it up in Linux Mint, but today I'm going to show you how to set it up in Gentoo because there's a couple of extra steps that we have to do, uh, mostly relating to the kernel. If you customize your kernel, you might not have the right options enabled to get this working. Uh, and I hope that you customized your kernel. Otherwise, I don't really know why you would be bothering with Gentoo in the first place. Uh, so anyway, to give you some background on this, uh, one of the dependencies for DroidCam is this application here, V4L2 Loopback. And basically what this does is it allows you to have virtual video devices on your Linux computer. Uh, and it's kind of the main thing that makes DroidCam work. So with DroidCam, it's going to bind your Android phone to something like Dev Video Zero. Uh, so anyway, if you customize your kernel in a really minimal way to just exclude a bunch of stuff that you aren't gonna use or that you thought you didn't need, you might get an error when you go to emerge this package uh, config video dev is not set when it should be. That's what the output of that error will be. So to fix that, what we wanna do is of course, cd into user source Linux and become root and then enter into the menu config. And you're gonna to want to go into your device drivers and scroll down about to the middle of the way where you get to multimedia support. And you're gonna to want to enable the camera slash video grabbers support. Uh, and of course, also enable multimedia support so that you can actually go into the sub menu. And you're also going to want to enable the media controller API which is going to then give you access to the V4L2 subdevice user space API. So enable those options and then go ahead and save your kernel configuration and then exit out of it. And just go ahead and rebuild your kernel at that point. And then you can reboot and you should be able to emerge the V4L2 loopback uh, it might actually emerge automatically after you rebuild your kernel, but if it doesn't, like I said, just go ahead and re-emerge it. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and a couple of side notes. You'll have to reinstall DroidCam uh, pretty much any time that you update your, uh, your kernel, whether you're just upgrading the version or whether you're actually changing some of the different options in it if you're on Gen 2. Um, so you can just do that with the script that comes with DroidCam. There's an uninstall script, and then you can just go ahead and reinstall it from there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, also, I would recommend installing ADB alongside with DroidCam so that you can uh, actually use your Android device over a USB connection. Uh, because by default, what DroidCam wants to do is it wants to send it over your Wi-Fi, like you choose a port to send it over, and then you would uh, like configure your IP address of the phone in here and then DroidCam port like you can see here. Um, but I'm doing it over USB because you get less latency when you're doing it over USB. You know, if you're sending it over your Wi-Fi and then it's going back from your router into your computer, obviously that's not gonna be as good, especially if you have a potato tier router, it's going to drop some packets. And uh, yeah, video feed just isn't gonna be as good. Even if you have a good router, your USB is probably going to be better generally when data is being transmitted over a wire. It's better than being transmitted over the air. Um, installing ADB is pretty straightforward. Uh, I didn't get any issues when I was trying to install it. Um, one thing that you want to pay attention to is make sure that you're in the right groups. So you're going to want to make sure that your user is in the Android group in the plug dev group and also in the USB group. Uh, so yeah, once you've got all that configured, you can then use DroidCam on Gentoo and use it with whatever video device, uh, OBS, um, Discord, Skype, anything like that. 